Perhaps no one has influenced our knowledge of life on Earth as much as the English naturalist Charles Darwin. His theory of evolution by natural selection, now the unifying theory of the life sciences, explained where all the astonishingly diverse kinds of living things came from and how they became exquisitely adapted to their particular environments. But what does he have to do with the Darwinian revolution? In 1859, there was a groundbreaking revolution in both the scientific and religious realms. The Origin of Species, authored by Charles Darwin, was published. The book changed how people approach biology forever and has the fundamental impacts on modern science, religion, and the other aspects of society. The Origin of Species by Natural Selection is the process by which certain inherited traits makes it easier for some to thrive and multiply, changing the genetic makeup of populations over time, and is also called the survival of the fittest. He began his expeditions regarding his book around 1830, where he was so obsessed observing nature that he studies fossils, birds, barnacles, earthworms, fishes, tortoises, insects, to some extent even his own family. He noticed the animal's incredible adaptation to the environment, the ways in which organisms tend to be ideally shaped to enhance their survival and reproduction in specific environments. The most famous example of this are the variation of beaks Darwin observed in the remote Galapagos Islands of the coast of South America. He has observed closely related finch species, all of this quite similar to mainland species. He noticed the variation of beaks and how different they are in every island, depending on the availability of food. If there were hard seeds, the beaks were thick. If there were insects, they were skinny and pointed. If there were cactus fruits, the beaks were sharp to puncture the fruit's skin. We describe origin of species by natural selection based on Darwin's observations in the four basic principles. First, Different members of a population have all kinds of individual variations. These characteristics, whether their body size, hair color, blood type, facial markings, metabolism, or reflexes are called phenotype. Second, many variations are inheritable and can be passed on to offspring. If the trait has to be favorable, it does future generation no good and it can't be passed on. Third, Population can often have way more offspring than resources, like food and water can only support, or what Darwin calls as the struggle of existence. Lastly, given all this competition for resources, heritable traits that affect individuals' fitness can lead to variation in their survival reproductive rates. This is just another saying that those favorable traits are more likely to come out of the top and will be more successful with their reproduction. Not only is the phenotype is changing, it is also important to remember that genotype or the genetic form is also changing. In Darwin's theory, different modes of selection such as directional selection, which is when a favored trait is at one extreme end of range of traits like from short to tall or white to black, over time leads to the distinct changes in the frequency of that expressed trait in a population when a single phenotype is favored. Examples are giraffe's neck, in which was shorter back then due to the resources and availability of food which made their necks reach out for food in trees eating those juicy leaves. So what happens when an environment favors extreme traits at both ends of the spectrum while selecting against the common traits? That is called disruptive selection. An example would be crustaceans found in 2008 called Daphnia where there was an epidemic of yeast parasite where most were found smaller and reproduced fewer babies while some were found larger and was able to reproduce more babies and were stronger. Another mode of selection is called sexual selection where he noted that not on a struggle of existence but a struggle between individuals of the same sex, generally the males, for the possession of the other sex. Not only they need to survive, but they also need to reproduce more. This is also divided into two types, where directional sexual selection is where better physical appearance of the opposite is more likely to be favored, and the other one, which is fighting in privilege for mating. There is another type of selection called artificial selection, in which are today what we call as experimenting with genetic editing.